The folks at Epic Games have just unveiled and released the preview version of Unreal Engine 5.5, and this introduces a mix of high-level refined features and experimental tools aimed at enhancing the flexibility, performance, and visual fidelity of real-time 3D environments designed and rendering, simulation, animation, and game creation with Unreal Engine. And this release does come with a couple of interesting, cool, and impressive features, and today we're going to scan through all of these, and subsequently we will make detailed videos about some of these cool features. And for those who like to see these videos when they are do consider subscribing and also turning on notifications. And one of the major updates for Unreal Engine 5.5 is Megalite. And this experimental feature allows for the use of thousands of dynamic movable lights in a scene, with all of these lights casting realistic area shadows and lighting volumetric fogs as well, as this opens up new possibilities for creating highly realistic and immersive environments. This feature enables a better handling of dynamic light in complex scenes such as urban environments or even large-scale simulation. The goal of Mega Light is to maintain performance efficiency by allowing a massive number of light sources without overwhelming the rendering pipeline. And there's actually a very interesting demo for this. Mega Lights enables artists to use area lights as freely as they would any other light source. Now, whether you're using textured area lights, light functions, crisp shadows, or lovely soft shadows, you can have huge numbers of lights, of any type, in whatever configuration works best for your scene. And for sure, this feature will greatly simplify lighting and open up so many lighting possibilities in Unreal Engine. And that's not all for rendering. There are updates to hardware ray tracing. Local exposure is also getting an interesting update as this now supports better illuminance calculation with support for transparency, volumetric effects, as well as additional controls for artists. Patricide volumetric effects is getting an impressive update. Vulcan ray tracing as well has now been moved to beta. Patracer is now production ready, and this means that Patracer is fully featured and now it can act as a reference for atmospheric and volumetric cloud. There's also improvement to render passes, orthographic rendering, render parallelization, and substrate has now been moved to beta. Local fog volumes are now production ready with Unreal Engine 5.5, and if you've been thinking about texturing in Unreal Engine, with Unreal Engine 5.5, the mesh painting on Nanite Mesh instances is now fully supported. Day sequence, just like we have with Twin Motion, is now available in Unreal Engine and it is fully experimental. Heterogeneous volumes are now in beta and there's also the bindless rendering. And for this release, animation is getting a couple of interesting updates as the folks at Epic Games are continuing the updates and improvements to their animation and rigging altering tools. And one of the updates that is now available has to do with the skeletal editor as it is now fully production ready. So at this point you can bring in your mesh, rig it in Unreal Engine, skin and get it animated. There is also a couple of interesting deformers that are now available with Unreal Engine 5.5. And this includes the lattice deformer and the scope deformer. Additionally, time warp can now be added to the animation layers, and with this you can simply use the graph editor to read time animation sequences or motion capture data. With the chooser table, you can now make selection within an animation blueprint system, and all of this is to reduce the round trip that artists would have to make moving from Unreal Engine to other DCC apps to achieve various animation results. And while we're talking about animation and stuff that you can do, Nanite Skeletal Mesh Rendering is also another experimental feature that is now available in Unreal Engine 5.5 and this allows Nanite to render skeletal meshes at high frame rates, and this can also be achieved with lower end hardwares. And for sure, this is a major breakthrough for creating detailed high poly character models without sacrificing performance, and once this becomes production ready, you'll be able to bring in extremely high detailed skeletal meshes and get them working right inside of Unreal Engine. There is also a couple of things within character and animation that were not mentioned during the Unreal Engine 5.5 presentation at Seattle, and this includes the dynamic sequencer, the modular control rigs, rig variant, the physics controlled components, and audio driven animation for MetaHuman Animator. There's a pretty cool plugin that comes with Unreal Engine 5.5 called Mutable, and this generates dynamic skeletal meshes, materials, and textures in real time for creating character customization systems and dynamic content. And for the ML Deformer, there's an improved workflow, and this now comes with support for painting masks. And for those thinking about creating muscles, or you would like to start making muscle systems in Unreal Engine, Chaos Flesh is now in Experimental, and with this alongside ML Training, you can now start making that realistic and accurate muscle system in Unreal Engine.
And speaking about chaos, the Niagara Data Channel is now production ready with Unreal Engine 5.5 and this comes with improved user experience and runtime compatibility. The Chaos Modular Vehicle System is a vehicle simulation plugin that now enables real-time vehicle construction and destruction and this is an interesting tool that artists would be able to use to customize vehicles in Unreal Engine 5.5. There's a new Chaos Visual Debugger and the Niagara Lightweight Emitters, which were experimental in Unreal Engine 5.4 and now shifted to beta in Unreal Engine 5.5. And Chaos Destruction is getting a number of updates. Of course, there's a couple of nice and cool features in terms of frameworks, which are currently available in Unreal Engine, and these are super impressive ones. And for those who are into virtual production, Unreal Engine now comes with some super useful tools. And some tools might be removed in Unreal Engine 5.6. Example is the virtual scouting. And virtual scouting, which was introduced in Unreal Engine 5.4, will be removed in Unreal Engine 5.6. At this point, this is now considered as a legacy scouting tool, which remains functional in Unreal Engine 5.5. The Live Link Hub has been moved to beta, and same thing can be said for the multi-user application, which has undergone a series of user experience and technical improvements. And the production-ready SMPTE2110 for in-camera VFX is now fully supported in Unreal Engine 5.5. We've also got some time code improvements as well. And in general, in terms of virtual production, workflows have been enhanced and with new features like multi-camera support and inner frost stream splitting, larger scenes can now be easily captured. And there's also this very beautiful photography and bookmark browser which also comes with this. And this allows you to now take photographs which can be dropped directly into your projects folder and this would make for good references and also for good bookmarking. Some other interesting quality of life tool includes the post smoothing and also the virtual camera carousel. And for those who've explored modeling in Unreal Engine, the modeling tools have now gotten some interesting update. 5.5 still offers more and more improvements to modeling, the workflows themselves, and also some updates to the UV tools. And in terms of texturing, this is now available as experimental, and you can now play with certain nodes inside of Unreal Engine. And for those who like to create things procedurally, the procedural scripting is also available, which you can use to make some cool stuff. And speaking about the procedural tools that are now available in Unreal Engine, the procedural content generator now has some impressive updates that you can come through and see for yourself. More so, if you're into motion design, there is a good number of enhancements and features that are now available. Within cloners and effectors, Push Apart is one of the cool effectors that are now available in Unreal Engine 5. There are some updates and improvements to cloners and collision, text animation, material design texture sets, and material design effects, all the way to transition logic. And this is not all, Unreal Engine 5.5 also ships with beautiful and impressive updates for audio design with meta sounds. There's also updates to editor and UI systems, media, production rendering pipeline, content pipelines with awesome support and performance updates for USD, there's also updates to protocols, and a few developer iterations for Unreal Zen Loader, Zen Server, Unreal Hard CI and Remote Execution, UBAC++ and Shader Compilation. There are also a few updates to world buildings and finally, platforms now have some impressive updates and Unreal Engine 5.5 brings several improvements to this category from a detour preview to mobile rendering features which now allow devs to be able to see what the game or tool would look like on the device that they are creating for. With some additional updates to the XR resolution scaling, mobile forward and desktop forward feature parity, and with Unreal Engine 5.5, Apple Vision OS 2.0 is now part of platforms that devs can create for. Although, this is currently available as experimental, and with all of these and lots more planned for the future, this release is definitely a milestone as it does come with a ton of updates. And even if we choose to discount Megalites, Unreal Engine 5.5 brings performance and advanced set of tools to creators. So, for those who would like to consider taking a look at all of this, and possibly you would like to find out more, then links to this is gonna be in the description, so do well to check it out. So, this is it, Unreal Engine 5.5 is now available in preview and if you'd like to explore this, you can simply go over to your Epic Launcher and download Unreal Engine 5.5. For some of the tools that we've just talked about, we're gonna make full videos about them, just to explain to you guys how you can work with it so you can get an idea on how to get started with them. So if you'd like to be notified once this is available, simply go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe and also turn on notifications. Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and I'd like to see you guys in the next one. Peace.